Hello everyone, today is the great news. The new plugin from Avalanche GitHub submitted, it's called LiveBridge. And I'm going to make a brief uh, tutorial how to use it and what it's for. So it was used during the development for H2 cutscenes and it was it, it helped to manage um, to work with a very heavy scene when uh, we need to like continue making a facial animation but the facial rig itself was super heavy so we use a separate instance of motion builder to take control and the preview in the main global uh, cut scene. So let me show an example. So I have two motion builder instances, as you can see. And the most important thing here is that I open them uh, with the administrative rights, because that needs uh, to be, um, the motion builder should have administrative rights to make it possible to run the plugin. So now I'm going to uh, devices and in devices, if the plugin is installed, the binaries we can see on the GitHub repository in the release section. And in devices, there is the bridge client and bridge server. So bridge server is where you can take control of something and the client will do a preview. But there is also some features like, uh, for example, eye direction, some markers that you can um, animate in both directions and split. Uh, but I will not go too much deep into the details. I will make like a super brief example how to use it. So let's try with the, start with the tutorial uh, with the Mia character. So I'm going to open the Mia character here and I'm going to open on the client side. So this right side will be a client side for me. So here I'm going to open the Mia character as well. I probably don't need text, but anyway, it doesn't matter too much. So here on that uh, left side, I'm going to put the bridge server. And the bridge server, we have some properties here, uh, which is not uh, super visible right now. But what we need to have absolutely like a quick sample, we need first of all to make a mapping. So how many bones we will map to be transited between the client, the client and server. So I'm going to select the main hierarchy, except the geometry. So it should be bones there's, or null factors or something, but not a geometry element. So we need to exclude um, yeah, the polygon geometry out of that. Then I'm pressing like a save uh, geometry somewhere. I'm going to get a body set. So I'm just going to override that. And then I need to import back this body set. So now when I uh, when I done with that, uh, if I go to model binding, I will see that now I can bind my hierarchy. It could be even partial, like it could be on the facial joints, on the hand joints, or any kind of part of a hierarchy. But it needs mapping to be catch up by the device to me to make an output. So then I go live and then start streaming this data uh, over the system memory. Uh, so now on the right side, what I'm going to make a client here. So just put the client device uh, into a scene. Let's make it a bit bigger, this window. Because as usual, when you have several monitors, you can like absolutely have a freedom to where to put each instance of Motion Builder. But right now, I'm, I'm presenting everything in one monitor. So it's kind of not enough space. So here I'm importing this um, uh, body set and mapping the Mia reference as well and going to live. Uh, on that device, I also would like to switch fast idle on. That means if um, this instance of Motion Builder is not on focus, it will still uh, do a refresh and um, render for the viewport. So here, if I go to Control Rig, right now my devices are connected. So I can go to Control Rig and see if I do some action, I'm taking control even here, I don't have any um, any control rig, anything, but I'm taking control of the skeleton to make a preview on the client side. And if I grab the timeline, I have the timeline affected as well on the client side. And I can do the both. So if I want to preview something, like let's make some uh, simple keyframes, I put it here, uh, let's see, be full body, doesn't matter. So this one, two keyframes. So if I play animation, I will see the preview here on the client side. But if I want to 
uh, to scroll on the client side as well. That will control the server side um, timeline, but also have a result as the feedback of the post updated. So it's very convenient when you don't need really to, to change your frame, you don't need to jump to the server to do that. So that's all for now. I hope you will find it useful as well. The full source coded binaries you can find on the Avalanche GitHub, which called ACT, Avalanche Content Toolkit. Um, yeah, feel free to write questions if you have any. And see you next videos. Have a great day. Bye.